I got kicked off of Facebook. Hold on one second. I'm sorry, guys, I was having technical difficulties, but we are live with the third episode of Churchy Chats with a Church Girl. And my name is Alicia Wiley. If this is your first time here, I am the founder and creator of a church girl. A church girl started off as a clothing line, but now it's more of a lifestyle brand. And we seek to uplift and inspire everyone sorry, we have guys. the privilege of coming in contact with. So thank you for tuning in. I want to introduce my guests to you all. I, um, my first, well, I'm, I'm gonna let them introduce themselves in the order that they are, um, that, I, that I introduce them, but I wanna say what I wanna say first. Um, so Lady Hanan Daniels, she is um, somebody that I grew up with, kinda, sorta. Her and I, um, my, one of my childhood best friends is her little sister. So we grew up in the same church and, you know, she's doing wonderful things. She's married to her. She's a preacher's wife and her and her husband are doing a wonderful thing in ministry. Um, so I reached out to Hanan and here she is. I'm so, so happy to have you, Hanan. Thank, Thank you for being on the show. And then I have Mr. Josh Rogers. He is somebody that I connected with through a platform called BCI. And let me just tell y'all how good God is. I might as well put him and Latasha in the same little um, speech because she is somebody that I also connected with through BCI. This is our first time meeting, first time seeing each other, first time connecting. I reached out to them, um, you know, just through it. I slid in their DMs, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I slid in their DMs and was like, I need you on my show. And they both responded and were like, we would love to. So I just want to thank y'all. And I know that this is God ordained because you just don't be like, yeah, I don't know you, but I'm going to do it. You know, so you know when God is in something. So um, thank you all. Thanks everybody for being here. Hanan, please introduce yourself, Josh, Latasha, and then we're going to get into the topics for tonight. All righty. I'm Hanan Daniels, a uh, mother of two beautiful girls, married to Marlon Daniels. We have a wonderful ministry in Hammond, Louisiana. I'm an entrepreneur, also a teacher. Um, I'm excited to be here. Um, my ministry and passion, guys, I just, I love to deal with the youth. So I just feel like the youth are our future. We win our youth back and the church will go far. So I'm excited. I'm excited. <coughs> Amen. What's, What's up, y'all? I am um, Josh Rogers. I reside here in the Atlanta area with my wife and two sons. I am a um, real estate consultant by trade, um, but I also host a podcast, write a blog, and um, I've curated this kind of fitness accountability group called the J Work here on Facebook. Um, one of my passions is definitely college and young adult ministry. Um, did that for several years. Um, right now, as a director of church culture for all nation worship assembly of Atlanta. Um, and that's me. <laughs> all right. Yay to the all nations. I'm all nations Huntsville. Yeah, Huntsville. All nations. Okay. <laughs> okay. I am Latasha Houston. Uh, by day, I'm a federal government employee. Um, and I'm also a mom of two, a, a boy and a girl. By night and any other time, I am a writer slash blogger. I have a blog titled Biblically Led, Cornbread Fed. I love the Lord and I love the South. Um, and I am an author and motivational speaker. I just wrote a book titled The Seven Year Promise. I have it. I have it. You do. <laughs> and my mission and my passion is just women. I love... Um, just helping women to be able to own their imperfections because I know how not owning mine kept me bound in shame and so many other things, which ultimately stopped me from stepping into my purpose. And of course, we're all needed in the kingdom. So I'm like, sis, whatever I can do to help you heal and own those imperfections like I did, let's do it. 
Good uh, stuff. So yeah, I appreciate everybody being here. And Latasha, I wrote a um, I wrote a I was about to say I wrote a book. I have not read. I it. know. <laughs> I wrote a sermon. I, I preached a sermon called um, "Do It for the Vine," and it was basically telling. This was back in two thousand four. You know when the Vine thing. I mean fourteen when the Vine thing was popular. Mm -hmm. But what it was basically about is telling people that God has given us each very unique gifts. And you know, you we all know John fifteen, and the reason why we have to be okay with operating in those gifts, although we may not feel like it's a churchy gift. We all have a gift that's for the body. And it may not be a deacon or an usher or this or that. It may be fashion, which was my right. life. You mm -hmm. know, it may be, you know, consulting. It may be real estate. Whatever it is, God has given each of us a unique gift and we need to use that to the glory of God. Absolutely. So, excited to have you all here. Let's get into these good old topics, okay? Listen, mm -hmm. so we're going to start lightweight. We're going to start with the lightweight stuff. You know, we don't want to get too heavy. Too heavy. <clears throat> so did you all see the Erica Badu versus Jill Scott versus? Did y'all, yeah. were y'all yes. aware that that was happening? Yeah. So, the day after, I want to say, or it may have been the same night, Twitter started kind of going crazy about everybody <laughs> loving Jill so much people having so much respect for her, but not having that same respect for Lizzo. You're a Jill lover, but you're a Lizzo hater. And here's why I wanted to bring this up. And I thought it was a good conversation for us to have because I believe in the church, we allow certain things from certain people. Like okay. we'll say this person can do this, but then if somebody else does it, it's not okay. So let's talk about them and then we can kind of venture into that. What do y'all think? Can they be compared? Are they to be compared? I can go first. So here's the thing. And I read the article and I watched everything. <coughs> um, like, um, I feel like, like this. Okay, so after all of the empowerment and Michelle Obama came on and she was giving the women kudos for all of them sticking together I thought about how um, how things are going good and Satan comes in with the bad. Yes. And I just felt like, and Jill Scott said this particular, she was just like, okay, the idea of if you're successful, then I can't be. Right. Or if I'm successful, then you can't be. And that's kind of the perception and the idea that is put out there, you know, with always comparing African-American women. Yes. So I... I'm this type of person. Um, I the generation I come from, I'm a little bit of old school, but I'm a new school kid. Yes. So yes. with that notion being in, uh, being put together, we don't have to be uh, compared as women all the time. We can be in our lane, be in our, in our anointing, and we can, like you say, slay and have different gifts. And I just think it was kind of like a uh, a social media play for them to kind of start bringing Lizio in there because Jill Scott, she's very reserved. You know, she's uh, done her due diligence in the music industry and so many other areas. I just kind of think they're unequal. I mean, in this opinion, you know, so I'm gonna let some of the other uh, <laughs> guests talk. <laughs> Well, first, I, I don't think that I agree that the comparison wasn't necessary. Mm -hmm. But what I think society does, which they typically do, and let's just, let me be the one to jump out there. Go they ahead. took um, Black, heavyset women and said, oh, there they go. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's the whole notion that they all look alike, they all act alike. And it's just so, I mean, Lizzo is her own form of art, has her own form of art. And Jill is, you know, has her own form of art as well. And they both have their 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 stands and their fans and all these kind of things. So first of all, inserting the comparison was wrong and egregious. Um, and uh -huh. one, because again, why are we putting two black women <coughs> unnecessarily? Um, the second part is that they're apples and oranges. Okay, Lizzo, tell us why, tell us why. But Lizzo is a lot more, if you listen to her music, I've listened to some of it, it's a lot more poppy kind of rap. Yeah. Yes. Yeah like really rooted neo soul artists and even the way they approach like the sexual um, innuendos in their music like Jill Scott you know I'm, I'm real married and we listen to Shirley C's over here in this bed um so <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, 
you remember her song Crown Royal, like just just the the the, the metaphors, the similes that she used to describe anatomy and all those different kind of things versus Lizzo, like bam, here it is, booty on the couch, right? It's just it's there's just it's just so different, and I think I think it was unfair, and I think it was an attempt to stir up something because you notice know because we're in Corona, ain't really no drama. TMZ don't have a whole lot to report. You see, so it was an attempt to kind of stir up something, but we thank God uh, for women who are very confident in themselves, assuring themselves, and love to celebrate each other, that they didn't buy into what was trying to be presented. Sure, that's fair. That's fair. And that's I fair. think Latasha. I think that was the same thing for me. So we took a moment that could have been a celebration mm -hmm. and we allowed it to be a moment to be divided. Right. So that was the thing that got me. It's like, before I can even think about Jill Scott and Lizzo, which like both have said, complete opposites. Mm -hmm. It was like, why do we always have to take a moment and make division just as we do in the church Absolutely. and other places? Absolutely. So I'm like, for, for a moment, we had a, a moment where we could come together and all be together and stay on one accord. But we chose to find the one thing that could cause division mm -hmm. just as we do in the church. And to talk about the comparison, I definitely don't think there is I don't think there is a comparison. And like Josh said, I think it was a thing where it's like, okay, we have two women. What's what's like about them? Mm -hmm. Oh, they're both plus size. Yeah, right. You know what? Let me, let me. So why you like this one and you don't like that one? It's not a comparison. Right. It's, it's not at all. As far as genre of music, as far as how they carry themselves, as far as image, it's no, not a comparison. So just because they have one thing in common, mm -hmm. we're supposed to say, oh, because... I like this person. I should also, it's no different than me saying I don't like rap music or I don't like, and the thing that they, we have in common is that we're black. That doesn't mean that I have to like all rap artists. So I think they took the one light thing and said, okay, so why are you praising her and why and, and putting her down? But the biggest thing is that the reason why people, I'm not going to say, but I guess Sean and Lizzo mm -hmm. had nothing to do with what Jill was doing in that video. So right. that's the other thing. Now, had Jill been in the video with her thong on, twerking to Erica Badu's music, then I can see you come back and say, you know what? So why you were okay when Jill did it, but when Lizzo wore the thong to the foot, the basketball game, everybody had an issue. Yeah. They were not even doing the same thing. Right. And I so think, why why even compare it? And Latasha, I think where the comparison came in was I don't know if y'all saw the video or y'all heard about when Jill did this oral sex on the mic mm -hmm. simulation on the microphone at her concert. So they were saying y'all were rooting for that. But when Lizzo showed up with her behind out at the game, y'all weren't rooting for that. Now, let me say where I stand with that. Okay, Lizzo, you were in a family environment. That's the only issue I have about That's her. That's the only. <laughs> you were in a family environment and sis, other people got to sit on those chairs. So those are the two things. <laughs> those are the two things that I had a beef about, about that. I wasn't upset. I'm not upset that she loves her body. I'm not upset that she shows her body. What Jill did, I'm not saying right, wrong, whatever, but it was just in a more targeted audience. You know, it was I paid to come see you do this. Period. I did not pay to see Lizzo's behind. Period. So that is the only difference that you know, and that was one of the comparisons. They were like, well, why is it that y'all praise her and she's doing these types of things? while Lizzo is getting all of this backlash and people hate on her for doing very similar things, you know? And like I said, when we started this conversation, I feel like in church, I feel like some people can get a pass for stuff. So, and I'm gonna I'm be the devil's advocate and I'm gonna use Jill as an example. I feel like Jill kind of gets a pass for some of, for what she did. Not that it's, I'm not arguing right, wrong or indifferent, but I'm feeling like people maybe our age or people who are more um, apt to enjoy a neo soul, uh, you know, situation are like, oh, but Jill is queen. Jill is this and Jill is that. So she can't, or it's okay for her. But it, it, if, you're, if you're comparing pound for pound, mm -hmm. the acts that are happening, mm -hmm. is it a fair comparison for the situations, not the women, but the situations. I think the thing that we also have to take into account, we don't just take into account the actions, but where the actions occur. That's no different than what I do at home 
is not the same thing that I'm going to do at church. Your point. So, and I, I think you can't, and, and that's, that just, that, that's knowing when and where things should happen. So yeah. I guess that's my whole thing. It's like, like, I'm not mad at Lizzo for showing your body. I wish I had the, the guts to do that type of thing. I'm not, mm -hmm. mad, but my thing is, it's a time and a place for everything. If I pay to see Jill, if I go to a show to see Jill, I'm coming to see whatever she chose to perform that night. Right. If I go to a basketball game, I do not come to see whoever chose to wear their butt out there night. Right. And that doesn't mean I hate Lizzo. That doesn't right. mean I hate Lizzo because I have something to say about her wearing her behind out at a game. On that seat that I might have to sit on. That's, yeah. just, that's, that's just what that means. Um, and, I, and again, to the place and space, like if you were on a beach, like you have the right to wear your bikini, your thong, mm -hmm. whatever. You know what I'm saying? If I go to a concert, it's no different than the guy, the boy bands of the 90s and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Whether hunching the ground and all these kind of things. Like you kind of know what to expect. So right. even, if it, even if it was a Lizzo concert, you know she twerks, she gonna bring out that flute and she gonna go. She On gonna her go. thing. But like you said, in a basketball game, I'm trying to walk the Hawks versus the Grizzlies. Like I ain't trying to see them. I ain't, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't mean I hate you. And you brought up a good point. And I want to read a couple comments right quick. Um, Simone said the black community have to be the first partakers in uplifting and loving ourselves. I'm tired of immaturity in us. Um, this is time we allow everyone to shine. They are both respect, rightfully respected in their own lane. And I agree with that. And Simone is coming with the good comments because she said, can we talk about Brandy and Monica? Because she said Monica refused to do the verses because she doesn't want to relive the competition that people started between her and Brandy. And we'll get to that in a moment. But what I want to ask you all is, is it okay? Because in the church, I think the moment we say something about something somebody did, not necessarily who they are, but something somebody did, we're accused of being judgmental. But is it okay for us to say, Lizzo, what you did wasn't right, but that doesn't mean that I'm judging you or I hate you but we get so I think and in, in, as Christians we get so we get that label oh y'all so judgmental but I can't I have to call out righteousness that's my responsibility is to call a spade a spade oh. I, that doesn't mean I don't love you Hanan you know what I'm saying that doesn't mean I don't love you because I call you out for something that I feel is not right and I want to chime in on that. Okay, so my husband and I, we're big on this, uh, the spirit of how you do something. Um, old school church, you know, if you're coming in there, the young ladies, and we're dressed, I'm going to just play it safe. If we're dressed provocative, and everybody has their own meaning of what is provocative, okay? Um, the old mothers used to say, hey, look, okay, let's, let's get it together. You know, mm -hmm. it's a certain way you should present yourselves okay mm -hmm. and again i tell you i'm like an old school new school baby with the me whole too. me too I'm me too me too i'm gonna get too big i'm gonna put that cloth on your lap there you go okay <laughs> so my Back. point um, <laughs> with, the the now, with the lace around the edges <laughs> yes. yes and you look y'all all let me say grew up in a church so you kind of know what it's about um mm -hmm. to go ahead and say this I don't think it is right on any level uh, for one person to do something and we excuse it in the church and then the maybe another person do it and they're not excusing the church. So I think that right there, I want to get that out that I don't think that's right. You know, yeah. we might have been guilty of it at some point, but it's wrong. Right. Um, the judgmental thing with church folks, that is something I've always prayed about, always struggled with. I think that whole perception is gritty. I think you could do a whole nother show on that and it'll take that. us a long time. Yeah. Um, I think it's a bunch of messed up perceptions. And uh, like you say, when you do things with the wrong spirit, that's when it comes with, I think you're judging. Like, you, oh, and she I, has I, you, uh, uh, you know, and that turns people away. We know that, guys. Yeah. We turn beginners in Christ away. It turns sinners away from you know, the body sure. of Christ. Right. And I also think that we have a different type of church today too, though, because we're dealing with sensitive Christians. Like back in the day, someone you could tell you and have a scripture ready for you about why you, you can't do that. And you, you just to. take it as, okay, right. I got it, mother. Because we don't even have mother boys like that anymore, for real. I got it. <laughs> and, and so I tell people all the time, for example, 
you know, we're none of us are without sin, right? Absolutely. So if I know your sin, if I know, I don't know, that that you you lie. And if you call me out on my sin, the first thing I'm gonna do is say, but what about your lying? But my thing is just because I'm a liar doesn't mean that I can't be honest with you about your about sin. Problem. And that's I the, think that's what's wrong with the body is that we're starting to get to the point where we're like, well, the only way you can tell me what's wrong with what I do is if you're perfect. perfect. No, I can still know the word and I can still be doing wrong, but that doesn't mean that I don't want to hold you accountable to do better. That's right. And the other piece about holding somebody accountable, I think when we talk about judging each other as Christians is that a lot of times we don't give ourselves or give other people the ability to grow past where they once were. Just because I did something in one season does not mean that I can't advocate against it. Yes, come on now, Josh. You know, what I'm because, you know before I got married, I had a whole season, right? Okay. Does not mean that now, right? Because I'm sitting in this space that I can't tell young brothers in college, like, hey, I did what I did, but let me tell you why that wasn't necessarily. Let me tell you what I dealt with. Let me tell you about some soul ties that I had to break. Let me tell you, you know what I'm saying? Now I can advocate against it. It's not that it wasn't enjoyable. Because let's be honest, sin was fun. If it wasn't fun, we wouldn't have done it. Yeah. Absolutely. Hallelujah. I, I enjoyed what we did, but once we grew in Christ and we developed our relationships more, yeah. we understood the consequences. We understood, you know what I'm saying, like what the other side of living righteous is really about and what it's like. Right. And we don't have to necessarily compromise our values, our ethics, and our Christianity, you know, to fit in or to do whatever. So right. even the judgmental piece, I think not only are Christians being judged, because they're looked at as being judgmental because people can, can't necessarily separate me from my past. But if you go back to my past, you won't find me there anymore. Here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that's a that's a whole piece about perspective. Because the first thing they want to say is, what about when you used to? When you I used, used to. to. I, that's why I'm here trying to help you now. I'm trying to, to help you because I used to. And, and because I used to, I have empathy and I know what you're going through. Absolutely. So, so let me go through, let me have been through so that I can help you. Yeah. <laughs> come on, come on. And that's what I think is, is a misunderstanding in the body of Christ. I'm not here to hurt you. I am only here to help you. Yeah. And let, like Josh said, let what I've been through been an experience. Let it be a lesson that I don't, I don't necessarily believe that experience is the best teacher. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. You don't necessarily have to go down that road to understand for somebody to tell you, listen, you don't want to do this. Let me do that for you. Let me tell you what it's like to be promiscuous. Let me tell you what it's like to be a liar. Let me tell you what it's like because I've been there. Done and let me tell you how it robbed me of my peace. Yes. Let me tell you how it kept me going in circles, how it kept me from my blessings. You know, let, let me tell you because I want to save you that season because I was like the Israelites running around a mountain. Listen, and listen, I don't want you to have to go around 40 times. I don't want you to have to go in the wilderness. You understand? Yeah. And we went, and, and speaking of the wilderness, we went to Israel two years ago. And when I went in the wilderness, I was like, okay, I get it. I understand. We're so quick to be judgmental of somebody else's situation. Oh, I wouldn't have been like the Israelites because see, uh-uh, uh-uh. But as soon as they dropped us off in the wilderness, I was like, wait, bus, don't even turn off. <laughs> because it was flies, it was hot, it was, but it's easy for us to judge what other people go through. Yeah. But the moment you get put in this situation, it is very easy to understand. So I think, I think, like Hanan said, it's the way you do what you do, how you address something. It's not about not addressing it, it's about how you address it. Yeah. And it's about us. I know we go to this scripture, well, how they going to, Tell me about the speck in my eye when they got the log in their eye. But that scripture does not excuse us mm -hmm. of holding each other accountable. Just because I'm not perfect, it doesn't mean that I can't say, look, Tasha, I'm worried about you. I sis, I don't want to see this happen to you. Well, you sleep around, but that's not what we're talking about right now. Tomorrow, right, right, right. Tomorrow you can talk about me. But today, <laughs> sis, we gonna talk about you. <laughs> But we have to be mature enough to have those kind of conversations. I was just about to say it's that spiritual maturity because I can, you know, I can think of times where I wasn't as spiritually, spiritually mature. And I'm like, sis, I'm straight. Because, you know, the truth of the matter is sometimes when we're, well, most of the time when we're sinning, we already know that it's a sin, it's a consequence and we shouldn't be doing it. So Period. sometimes it really just stings for somebody Period. to call us out. So yes. that's the spiritual maturity part. The sp right. spiritual maturity part is being honest about them and yourself that I know that what I'm doing is not right. But see, right. now that you've called me out, now I got accountability, right? Exactly. And so exactly. it's that spiritual maturity. It's about, do you want to keep sinning or are you trying to go to the other side? Absolutely. Uh -huh.
Absolutely. Uh, Come on, I'm excited. All right now, y'all, we go we going to ease into this next topic. Um, we going to ease on into it. So here's where, let me, let me preface it. So I have watched, I want to, I'm going to say two shows because I can only think, remember like a, the name of two specifically. And it was Insecure that comes on HBO and Why Women Kill. Now, Why Women Kill, I think it's CBS. It comes on. It was just something I found. Y'all know this quarantine time. We've been finding all kinds of stuff to watch and do because you know. Life has been real. But here's here's the themes that I've seen in both shows, very different audiences, very different um, demographics. One was an open marriage and one was a threesome. Now, now <clears throat> on Why Women Kill, it was an open marriage and a threesome. On Insecure, it was an open marriage. So when I when I started seeing these, when I started seeing these these things, I, I kind of my spirit was kind of like, okay, this is some serious and kind of uh, you know how you start to feel like, okay, y'all going too far, y'all doing a lot with these themes, y'all. We are not to believe that Christians don't have these thoughts. We are not to believe that these themes are being addressed in media and it's not being addressed behind a Christian's bedroom door. So is it okay for a Christian marriage to be open or to invite others in the, in the bedroom? And I, I just want, want to let y'all just speak on that for a while. All right, out, you, Josh. Uh, no, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so I, on no level and i'm going to tell you as a christian um and i didn't say this in the intro as a christian counselor getting into um my first area of counseling mm -hmm. i did my research okay i don't think it's a good idea for christian couples to ever have an open marriage and i stand behind this this is why i'm strongly opinionated about it 92 percent of open marriages and then divorce. Okay. That's not my first reason why I say Christians should never ever have an open marriage. And I went even to the point of looking up, what is an open marriage? What is an open marriage? How does that look like? Ooh, yes. the way I'm set up, <laughs> um, I can't, you know, but uh, going back to the matter at hand, regular marriages in, in a 40 to 50% divorce. So right there, okay. That's just statistics, but on the spiritual side, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. I mean, that's more like a Sodom or Gomorrah type of situation. I don't want to sound, you know, like I'm overly spiritual, but like how many spirits and sins are we connecting ourselves with when we even open that door? You know, um, I, I just... I don't know. I think it was Alicia Wiley who, um, I mean, Aisha Wiley, she posted something and it was like, I'm thankful how my parents raised me. Oh my goodness. Because people are wow. And I kind of thought about that, um, that notion she had. I'm grateful how my mom and dad raised me because that uh, seems to be the normalcy, having a, the normalcy today to have um, a lot of things coming in and out of your marriage, but I, I think it is definitely uh, biblically, biblically wrong, and um, God frowns upon it, guys. I mean, that's that's my stand, and I'm gonna stay, you know, with it. With look, if you don't love me anymore, let's go our separate ways. Let's right. uh, let's part maturely. Um, <coughs> let's let's do it the right way. So if you're not happy, I don't see how bringing somebody else in is going to make you happy and stay, if that makes sense. So yeah. I'm going to pass the mic to somebody else. <laughs> I 100% agree. I don't think that open marriages or threesomes should be something that we should explore within our marriages. I think it's dangerous for all of the reasons um, that was just explained. Um, but if you want, if, if, you, if the rationale behind it is that you want to spice things up, there are so many ways. Period. As, you know, married couples that you can spice things up. And brother, you know, if you want something different, tell them to change wigs. Period. <laughs> so, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, get, be creative. Like, you don't need 
another woman, you know what I'm saying, just for you to get whatever fix. Because honestly, if you're looking for that level of a fix, it's not going to happen. Listen, it's something else you need to fix. That's something else you need. Right, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I think I think it's really dangerous territory because let's be real honest with our flesh. What if that person is better than your spouse? Right. Huh. Yeah. Let's, 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 let's go there. Let's go there. And so now it creates this level of competition and comparison and you want to leave the openness and do the secretive type of things. You know what I'm saying? So, like, so... And it's, then you're no longer loving your wife like you love the church and you're no longer... Yeah. Baseline, it's wrong. You know what I'm saying? But... If you do open the door for whatever reason, we're not encouraging that. It just opens up so many terrible things yeah. that, can, that can really damage and destroy what God has allegedly put together for y'all. You know? Right. <laughs> so, and my thing is, I think it's a fleshly desire brought into a godly constitution. Mm-hmm. Again, I think it is a way, and I hate to sound extra godly and extra holy. It is a way for we Satan. We churchy, girl. We churchy. We churchy. It's all right. <laughs> it is a way right. for Satan to play on something that God has ordained. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, and, and you get in your head like, oh, you know, baby, I just want to, you know, what if we just, and what if we do? No, I just think it's flirting with your flesh. Like, call that flesh into alignment. Call it down. I got my wife. I got my husband to right. do whatever. And I just think that that's the beginning of the enemy coming to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. If I can come in, because we always think, like, uh, you know, I say all the time, we take for granted the steal, kill, and destroy. That's three different things. Yes. Like, it might not destroy right. your marriage, but it might steal the affection and a- admiration you have for your wife. It may kill your desire to be with your wife, and now mm-hmm. you want to be with the other person. It might not destroy it, but that doesn't mean it won't steal and kill. That so okay. I think it's just another way for the enemy to get into what God has ordained for a higher purpose. Because let's be honest. Marriage is not just about the man and the wife. It's right. really about it coming together for a purpose for the kingdom, right? Absolutely. So it's just another way to kill what God has ordained and yeah. get in there and make you feel like you're being good because we're in agreement to a one right. gather together in agreement, right? And it's right. like, no, it's a fleshly yeah, agreement. Not. Don't do right. it. Okay, good point. So I wanna, I'm going to play the devil's advocate in just a minute, but I'm going to read some of our comments. Kiana, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, but she said, let's forget about Christianity. It's dangerous, period. St- statistically speaking, I've been married almost 16 years. And while it's wonderful, it's not for the faint of heart. Sean Henry says, an open marriage sets the couple up for failure. Why get married? God isn't in it. My mom said, no way. God is not in it. <laughs> um, Al Jean says, nope, because you become together. You come together sexually and you become one. So you bring in somebody else into that, then you know, you're doing a whole lot of other things. Now, here's my question to you all. People, people like, this, now this is the only issue I really hear people talk about in Old Testament, New Testament church about tithing. That's the only time I hear somebody bring up, we are New Testament churches when they don't want to tithe. That's the only time I hear it. <laughs> with the mixing of fabrics, they all right with that. With eating other swine, they all right with that. With eating other catfish, they all right with that. But I'm gonna just say that to say this, all of our patriarchs of the faith had multiple wives. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that this was Old Testament, but what happens when somebody say, well, y'all's God, his favorites, Abraham and, and Moses and, and the patriarchs of the, the great faith had a couple wives. So he was against it in the Old Testament and now he not for it no more. Why, why does he change his mind? What, what kind... What kind of guy that you serve, he agreed with it then and doesn't agree with it now. Now, I'm just playing devil's advocate because I don't think, let me say that, I do not believe that threesomes or open marriages are of God. But let's have that conversation. When somebody hits us with that, what do we say then? What, what's our response to that? I look at it like this, and I've, I've had a conversation <laughs> with someone about that. Um, and my pastor, he teaches, okay, There are miracles that happen back in the day. There are modern miracles that happen now. Yes. Back in the day, they sacrificed. Um, Come on. They offered up, you know, lambs and sheep and all of these things. We don't do that today. Right. So uh, the world order has changed Mm -hmm. uh, for, thank you, Lord, the best. Because I don't, I thank God for allowing me to be born in this world because I, I cannot see me surviving 
with uh, being married to a man who had multiple wives. Right. But I said that to say, God's not parting the Red Sea anymore on that line of he's creating miracles. But there's a, a little girl I saw on uh, Facebook I don't know if it was cerebral palsy or it was uh, something, a disorder she had with her uh, legs. The doctors diagnosed that she would never, ever walk again. That baby got up and started walking. That is a modern day miracle. Yeah. Back in the day, God did things different. So uh, to the theologians who uh, have researched everything about what went on back then and what goes now, God is the same. Yes, he is. But things are forever changing around us. Um, so with that notion, I, I truly feel, um, I'm gonna bring it back to this. Right is right and wrong is wrong. Uh, evil is evil, <laughs> good is good. So I'm gonna let somebody else talk, but that is my opinion on the whole situation. Natasha, you, you itching girl. What was you? Yeah, I'm itching because, so I was, I was listening to Pastor Dan Darius Daniels and he made the comment, he said, because God provides you the context of what was going on back in the day, doesn't mean that it was allowed and that it was right. He's just telling you what the context was, what okay. was happening. He Come didn't on. say, and I gave I Adam Eve, and I Come gave on. Adam Keisha. He just telling you what was going on back in the day. Come so on. don't yeah. automatically <laughs> assume that just because it was going on, it was it something was, that he yeah. allowed. But for those mm -hmm. Bible thumpers who want to talk about what your God allowed, I want you to go and I want you to look at Abraham and Sarah. Come on, the perfect come, example come of on, somebody sis. trying to have an open marriage. Come on, sis. She, she got her Ishmael when come she on. was promised an Isaac. Come so on. it shows you come on, how come trying on. to have an open marriage. So it's both sides to that thing. Yeah. You, we can we can use that example as why you don't need an open marriage. Come on, come and, on. Can we really just examine the the, the overall text for a moment? Come we on. gotta go back to the very beginning. Talk to us said something about God gave Adam Eve, right? Yeah. But when the original sin happened, sin entered the world. Come on, come the on. Original yes. come on, Josh. was always for always. one and one woman. But when sin entered the world, what that literally did was open up the floodgates for anything to happen. Come on, Josh. Come on, Josh. Come on, Josh. It does not mean that he condoned it. Come, and on, come on, Josh. You know, later we got Jesus who came to be the sacrifice to atone. Come on, from the Old Testament. Come you, on, Hallelujah. You want me to run around the room or what? I'm, I'm about to. I'm about to start speaking in tongues. Yeah, I'm Baptist, but I'm a little Pentecostal too. <laughs> hey, that's all right. If you lean into the sin of the Old Testament, then what you literally do is disrespect and negate the blood that was shared by Jesus. Come on, come on. If you want to lose, you that as your point of reference. Then on, that's how you can have Jesus. Come on. I'm just going to throw my iPad. What I have to understand is that when sin <laughs> entered the world, it gave us the ability, right, to do whatever we wanted to do. Free will. Ain't right, free will. But when Jesus, yeah. he was the sacrifice. And come now on. that is forgiven. We come know on. better. So let's come live on. according to the original design. Come on, come on. Josh, what you, what's your cash app? Young yeah. killed. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh. Y'all murdered that. Y'all, every one of y'all murdered that. And I brought that up because that is the that was the original intent for marriage man and wife and and no extras no concubines no mistresses and just because we see like tasha said and i'm sorry do you like for people to call you tasha because tasha's know, fine yeah that's fine you know, we will nickname somebody in a hot minute we because in a minute it's gonna be t so you know <laughs> hey whatever <laughs> but like like tasha said she said listen it's context and us understanding what was going on and how it was going on but it doesn't mean that god approved of that so I just wanted to throw that out there because, you know, people always try to get Christians with that type of stuff. And I don't want to act like those questions and those opposers aren't out there. We about to tell you the truth in love. And this is what God intended. So don't get it twisted. And one of our viewers, Robert Grind says, the fathers of the faith all suffered from their actions of taking and having wives and concubines, especially King David, who was one of God's favorites. Point, case in point, my dad always says, God doesn't point punish you. Your sins punish you. And we can clearly see yeah. the fruit yes. of having multiple women and having multiple situations because every one of them had an issue. Every one of them 
had something going on that wasn't right. And if they had just left these other women out of their marriages and out of their situations and trying to fix something that God said he was going to do something for you, but because he's taking too long, you're going to go grab somebody else to do it. Come here, Hagar. Come here, Hagar. Man. You hear me? That is okay. And then you mad at that girl and you went to get her. Now you jealous of her because she got a baby with your man. But she popping them out because she fur a myrtle and your womb is closed. You can't be mad, sis. You did that. You did that. So, you know, it, it is obvious that it is not God's will. And we can see that in the scriptures over and over. But I think when we want to do something, we will make stuff say what we wanted to say and mean what we wanted to mean so that we can feel like we have the right to do it. However, that goes back to our first conversation of being mature enough to know that what you desire is wrong and you might not be strong enough right this minute to say, I'm going to drop this or I, I can't do this. You may not be there, but you have to <coughs> always call wrong, wrong. When you, don't ever call wrong, right. Yeah, and that's that it. When you get to a place where you are in serious trouble, I'm mm -hmm. not condoning sin. I'm not condoning faults. However, the moment that we start to call wrong, right is when we mess up big time. And I think that's where we start to let the culture run the kingdom because we don't want to call a spade a spade. Come like, on. Yeah. It's like, no, we want to water it down. Uh, it's not, I mean, it ain't that bad. No, it's wrong. Sin okay. is wrong. If I'm doing it, I'm wrong. Like you Fear. said, you might not have the strength to not do it starting today, but don't ever call it right. It's going to be wrong whether you do it or don't do it, stop doing it, get your way of escape or whatever, because he said he made a way of escape. But regardless, it's wrong. And I'm a right is right, wrong is wrong person. Me too. Me, even if it's me doing it. Absolutely. I and know I'm wrong, but I'm going to go ahead and slide and over. I right want here. everybody to understand, I am always the type of person, even when it comes to evangelizing and talking to people and winning people for Christ, it's not, again, you know, Christians, we always get so accused of hating people. I don't hate you. I hate the sin. And I know Christians say that all the time, but let me, let me bring it closer to home. I hate the sin in me yeah. more than I could ever hate the sin in you. So because I hate what God hates, I call sin what God calls sin. So I don't hate, I hate the sin in me. So let me start with me. No, I don't just hate the sin in you because you're a homosexual. No, I hate that I lie or I hate that I sleep around. I hate that I have issues. I hate my issues too. And I think that is something that we don't say enough yeah. when we're trying to win people to Christ or in our evangelism. We don't tell people, listen, I don't like what I do. Yeah. And, and I, think, I hate it in me. Go ahead, Hannah. Yeah, and, and the I think we will have more people in the kingdom of God if we be more transparent. And absolutely. Yes. To say, and I love what you said, uh, Alicia, about the whole let me look at me first. You know, like the Bible tells us, look at the speck in your own eye before yeah. we whatever. And I'm I will honestly say, and I haven't done this, I haven't been this way all the time, but I know that. Like we spoke on earlier about that spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. When you reach a level in Christ, I'm always telling God daily, look, let me check me first. You know, let me, let me make sure I'm coming correct. Let me make sure. And I'm very easy. Um, I'm very, I'm the type of person, if I have offended somebody, I want to get it right. Absolutely. I want to, because I, we don't need anything stopping us from, you know, of course, being closer to God, getting deeper into God, getting you know, everything that he has for us. But I love when you open that door and say, look, let me check me first. Let me make sure, because I think the more authentic we are, the more people in the world can see, oh man, okay, she's real. He's real, okay? They're not being hypocritical because you know, we all have that stamp of being hypocrites in the, yes. the spiritual world, you know? Like my dad says, everybody put their pants leg on one one uh, leg at a time, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm a first lady, I'm a mother, I'm still getting it right, you know, no, I'm nowhere near where I first started when I'm in Christ, but I think because I can keep it real and be honest, I think people will appreciate that and respect that, you know, and Absolutely. you've got that Christian stamp on you, all eyes are on you, let's be real. And that, and that's the thing, like, I, I think about this, uh, this scripture all the time, because most of the time, we just say the last part, but the scripture says, 
confess your faults to one another and yeah. pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avail oh. much. Here's mm -hmm. what we don't do. We don't confess our faults to one another. Mm -hmm. It's usually one-sided. Uh huh. And uh, no, Hanan, if you come to me and tell me something that you're going through, I don't necessarily have to tell you all of my business, right. but it feels one-sided when I'm coming to tell you uh, what my issues are and what I'm dealing with and you are sitting there like you sitting up on your soapbox. Mm -hmm. Like I'm made to feel that you don't have any faults, but we are supposed to confess our faults to one another and pray for one another so that we may be healed. So the effectual firm and prayer of the righteous can avail as much. Come on. But here's the thing though. I think, I, I don't want to just blame people for not discussing things with one another. I think a part of that problem is people trust i think it's a trust issue mm -hmm. if i tell tasha i'm afraid i'm afraid tasha gonna tell josh or i'm afraid tasha gonna call her and be like girl let me tell you about alicia we have to be we have to be more responsible in the body of christ yes. to keep each other's secrets in a way that the only reason why i need to know your fault josh is so that i can pray for you not that i can tell robbie uh, ronnie bobby ricky and mike because it's none of nobody else's business but we have to be there and i just want us in the body of christ to be able to have ears and people we can depend on without worrying about our business being yeah. on the street and here's the flip side to that too not only do i need to be able to trust but i need real accountability and not just the exchange of stories Amen to that. Tell you my thoughts will be like, you know what, bro? Last week, I blah blah blah. So now we just having a conversation. We bragging about our sins at this point. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> no, nah, brother, I got you. I sin even more. But let me tell you what I did. Right. right. But, but accountability or expressing my fault, be like, bro, I understand. Listen, I was once there, but this is how I overcame. Yes. This is what I'm doing. And when you feel that way, this is what you can do. Matter of fact, hit me up. You know what I'm saying? So absolutely. Or storytelling is something that we mix up um, because a lot of times, yeah, we may want to take it to the next person. We also want to fulfill it so we don't feel as bad about our stuff too. Yeah. And mm -hmm. one thing I do try to do is, and mm -hmm. I, not that I just go around like, mm, you, let me call you out. Come in, let me tell you a sin. If I do, I try to have the word to go with it. Absolutely. Because what may change is my opinion of you and my opinion of what you're doing. But what will not change it, is that word. Period. But the that grass also goodness, the flowers. Exactly. Days. Exactly. And, exactly. and that's what accountability comes for you too. Because the problem is if you tell me don't lie and you tell me the word, if I'm so offended, I won't then go do that research for myself. So I have to also want to grow personally too. Because I want to grow in my relationship with Christ. If you tell me that instead of just shutting it down, I might be like, okay, I hear you, whatever. But I need to go find accountability for myself. Yeah. I need to go read that word. Absolutely. I need to figure out what God says about that. And then in turn, pray for myself. Because yeah. he says he makes a way of escape. Yes, he does. So that's the thing too. It's like, not only are we denouncing the accountability from other people, but we're not holding ourselves accountable anymore because we live in this free world that we can just do what we want to do. Everything is subjective. Everything. And it's everything like, no, like at some point, I'm going to hold you accountable, but you grown. Period. I'm going to need you to hold yourself accountable, too. I'm going to need you well. to try to do something, you know? Yes. Here's the other last we got to stop being accountable to people who ain't accountable to nobody. Who your pastor? Who your mentor? Who you talking to? Who's leading you? Word. Say word. Because if you're being led by a renegade, then all word. Say word. Say word. That is a Which word. is why another thing, which we're not talking about today, which is why it's important to fellowship and be connected to a body. But hey, people think you don't have to go to church these days. But anyway. You need a covering and forsake not the assembly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to say that. And I'm going to read these comments and we're going to get to our last topic and we're going to hit that. But somebody, Cam, I'm sorry, because I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce your name. So I'm going to call you Cam. She says, why are we telling people our faults when we can go to the Father ourselves? We give people more than we should for the wrong reasons. And my response to that is because, yes, we can go to God. But sometimes we need somebody to talk to, somebody that can maybe relate, somebody that can hold us accountable. And some of us are not in the place in God that we can just take it to God and be through with it. Because can I tell you how many things I took to God and went right back and picked them back up? Come on. Left them at the altar and then picked them right back up. From okay. the altar. I left my burdens 
at the Lord and I left them there, but I went back and got them because I didn't have any accountability. So Cam, that would be my reason for saying that we don't just confess our faults to God. And I'm not saying that we confess to other people as much as we are doing this as a catalyst to hopefully for change. But also because God gets the glory that way. Absolutely. If, just <laughs> like Pastor Mike Todd, when he talks about how he was addicted to pornography. Mm -hmm. If you tell me that you are addicted to pornography and now I see you on this platform and I see you living better and doing right God and all of that, that's, that's God. So yes. I think we forget that it's not just about us, but it's about also God getting the glory Absolutely. because that person uh -huh. who might not have that connection or that relationship with God, when you say, listen, I couldn't stop on my own. I tried. It right. was, it, that thing had me bound yeah. and I had to pray my way up out and I had to do X, Y, and Z. I need you to know it wasn't Tasha that did it. Period. God gets the glory. And I think Period. that's the bigger picture. It's not about, and you know, when I started my blog and I wrote my book, that was my main thing. I'm like, well, how are these folks going to know my business? And once you put it in a book, I can't take it back. Right. I'm like, why well, worried about people's opinion? God gave Period. me an assignment. Period. And God put me here to be the light so that he can get the glory. And that's, that's all, all I care do. about. Because that's if he all doesn't all get the do. glory, we're not making disciples. We're not being disciples and we're not making disciples. And that's, and that's Bible. Revelations, I can't give you the exact that's Bible. The yeah, the exact address, but can y'all hear? Did we lose Josh, y'all? I don't. Josh, can you? Can you hear us, Josh? We, I, we, we can't can. hear you. Maybe mute and un I don't know. Maybe mute and then unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. There we go. So give us that word one more time. That was the enemy. <laughs> that was the the enemy. The devil is busy. Oh, but, no but you said that's Bible. That's Bible. Revelations teaches us that we overcome him who is him, the devil, by the, the lamb and the words of, of our the testimony. Lord. Come on, sir. People will never experience the miracle until their faith is built up to a place. I need a witness. Right. If I know in the earth. At least I know I have it for her now. And then I know God can do it for me. And sometimes we just don't have the example. It's not that we don't believe, but God, can you really do that? Can you really forgive me of that? Can you yeah. can do that? And to know that Mike Todd and Josh and everybody else got delivered. And Tasha. Man, you can't. And Alicia, put me in that number. Come on. It ain't nothing Let's better go. than when you saw me doing it. Okay. You you call me in the act? Listen, my God is faithful. My Come God on. is a deliverer. And I'm a Like shooter. I hear you saying he raised Lazarus from the dead. But when you tell me that Tasha did X, Y, and Z, Come on. that's more relatable. Right. Yeah. And, now, and now you you you're not doing that thing no more, and now you heal. That's more Listen. relatable. Listen. Just like we give the examples from the word, and they share their business. It's we modern day word. I'm Period. telling you, my modern day example. We're the walking living Bible, and yes. every single person who is in that, as I call it, the faith hall of fame, in the, in the book in the good book of Hebrews, none of them were perfect. And we saw all of their imperfections, but we're rooting them on. We were still rooting them on on the way. And they are an encouragement to us. When I go read about David, when I go read about Hannah, when I go read about these people, if their lives were perfect, if they left out the bad stuff, then where would I be edified? Where yeah. would I be? Where would I get growth from? Because I'm like, well, these people were perfect. I need to hear where they made a mistake. Yeah. I need to hear where they weren't perfect so that I can benefit, as you said, from the testimony. Come on. Absolutely. From the testimony. All right, y'all. So we go, we go ease on to this last topic. All right. So everybody knows we might go over a little while, but we in here. So let's do this. Okay. <laughs> we all know that for the last, maybe, I don't know if it's been a year yet, but Dwayne Wade's son, Zion, has said that he wants to be a woman. He feels like that is who he is. I, I, it's, I don't want to be disrespectful for y'all, but it's hard for me to say she, it's hard for me to do that. So I'm going to stick with my convictions for right now. Um, so he wants to be a girl and his parents, I don't know about his, his birth mother, but his father and his stepmother, Gabrielle Union, completely support him. It's all over everywhere. He's changing his name. He is dressing like a girl, all of this stuff. So of course I had my thoughts and opinion on this, but what took that a little further is a couple of weeks ago during the quarantine, um, Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade and Steph Curry and Aisha had a sip and chill. So they were kind of just talking and 
you know, all that stuff. And, and they didn't talk about that, but, but what it sparked in my mind was, okay, Aisha and Steph are Christians. Have they addressed this issue of this boy transitioning to a girl with their friends? Is it their responsibility to address this issue? And if we were in those situations, what is, is it our responsibility as Christians, even if we're not asked to say, Yo, lo, your little boy is not supposed to be a girl. Should, <clears throat> Steph, should Steph as a known Christian, let's start with that. Should Steph as a known Christian man okay. be saying something? Should he be speaking on this? Okay, I'll go first. I have um, two, two kids and I'm going to put it out there that whenever we address someone else's kids in particular, you know, us as adults, we can do our own thing. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of take the blows, whatever the case. Um, kids, when we discuss them, they're very, it's a very sensitive issue. Yes. And the first thing I would do, I would definitely go in prayer. Okay, how am I going to approach this? Because I don't want to damage the relationship, mm -hmm. whatever. Nevertheless, I do believe I am my sister's keeper, my brother's keeper. Mm -hmm. um, and with that spirit, going back to that, how am I going to address this without being... Uh, judgmental without coming across the wrong way. Yes, I'm going to mind my business, but, you know, have that conversation. I would have that conversation. Okay. Um, um, okay. So I'm, if I'm going to have the conversation, I'm going to, and first, let me say this. I think when the, our kids are going through things, they're adolescent, they're, they're youth. Mm -hmm. um, it is definitely hard to raise kids in this generation with having mm -hmm. an old school upbringing. You know, my mom's the type Saturday morning, hey, ain't nobody sleeping, everybody up. You know, everybody, Getting up, cleaning up. everybody cleaning up, everybody, you know, right. the same thing on Sunday morning. You live here, everybody going to church, nobody. Yep. So I'm saying all that to say, as parents, our responsibility is to be that beacon of light for our kids, that sound judgment for kids. And I feel like, okay, what if this is a phase, okay? Are we going too far? But to get back to the matter at hand, I would have that conversation with more of the approach of what's going on? Okay. <laughs> you know, where are we with this? You know, what if, what if he's going through a phase and then he gets out of this phase? You know, I'm not gonna be, oh, strong 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 judgment spirit but you know kind of you know pray i'm gonna pray before we address it but sure i will have it i will have that conversation okay you would have it josh yeah. what you think so i've so i've <laughs> i've wrestled with this one wrestle not not like jacob though huh no. i was just thinking that i, I won't let you go until you bless me no we church you know we church <laughs> No, we churchy. You got a limp? You got a limp or what? No, let me stop. All right, all right. The reason why is because I have two sons, and um, I know again how sensitive the topic of children in general are. Uh, I got wind that a neighbor said something about my children being bad, and I was ready to walk down that street and be like, listen. "Tell daddy to come talk. He know what I say." Listen. Come Listen, and that was just on. And I know my kids can be a little crunk, you know what I'm saying? But still, yeah. them, but they parents can be even more crunk. What's up? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they're mine. So that's just that. So I think I would, I think I would have a conversation. Okay. That conversation would be one of understanding what Dwayne's and Gabrielle's mindset, their perspective, how they're handling it, um, maybe what resources they're seeking, because I'll be the first to be to say that I'm not completely well versed in the whole transgender transitioning piece. So I, you know, I would just really want to be interested on how they are how they are approaching it as parents. And then also I think just stepping out and looking at their relationship, you have to know that Dwayne and Gabrielle do, do not subscribe to Christianity in a way that the courage do. So you so approaching them from a this is the Bible, and God said, you know, probably will not reach them. You know what I'm saying? Like that, and will really damage the friendship and also probably disallow any potential witness, witness. or 
you know, conversation that you could have. So I think approaching it from a standpoint of trying to understand and trying to seek, um, I guess, get, get insight into what they're seeing as parents and how they're dealing with it will be how I would approach it. And once I open up that conversation, then we will see how Holy Spirit deposits in me to say yeah. what I may need to say, you know, concern, you know, as it pertains to my standpoint, you know, with the gender of that child. Okay, what you say, Tash? So I agree with you both. Um, I definitely would have the conversation out of love. Um, so that would be my biggest thing is just going in love. Um, definitely trying to be understanding and not more so point my finger at you. You're not supposed to just like, like they both said, I have, a, I have two kids. So when you come at me about my kids, it's totally different, especially when it comes to my parenting style and everything else. So I would definitely say something. I would, I wouldn't sit on it. Um, and I know, I think that we take for granted that Steph didn't say anything. I mean, cause we just see them publicly. We don't know what he said probably, mm -hmm. but I would definitely take the prayer approach. But a lot of times what I have learned, especially for people who don't subscribe to Christianity is most of the time you just got to intercede for them. Yeah. Um, and we always think that, well, I know I used to, um, fighting a battle to me was with my mouth, with my words, like, and so you get it. You know, I'm, I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. But now I've learned in that spiritual maturity that sometimes you just fight in prayer. Only God can change someone's heart. Mm -hmm. Only God can give somebody wisdom and discernment. Um, and so when it becomes a thing like that, once I've stated, you know, how I felt in love, um, right. from there, I would just take it up with God in prayer and just leave it, leave it with like that. Okay, yeah. I have one more question for y'all on that. I agree with everything that everybody said. I'm going to read a couple comments and then I'm going to ask you all this last question and this is how we're, we'll end it. The spirit of, fem Robert said, the spirit of feminization of the male, the devil has always been after the male seed, which I believe is true. And in our culture, especially now, it has tried to be forced into your mind as something normal and as something that's okay because that is what the devil is always after. He's after anything that's fruitful. And, and a male and female relationship is fruitful. There, there's no fruit out of a homosexual relationship. And that's just that. And that's a whole nother conversation, but I'm not gonna get into that. Um, Renata said the old saints used to say that you have to catch the fish before you scale it. Good point. If the waves are not saved, which we all touched on, you will ruin your witness if you go at them the wrong way. Here's my question. If you were Steph Curry and you were being interviewed by somebody and they asked you your thoughts on it and you had to address it publicly, how would you address it? Then? What would you say to that? If they said, oh, you're friends with the Wades, but you're also a Christian. What are your thoughts on their son transitioning? How would you deal with that question? I will kind of address it kind of how we are now um, in the sense, I, I wouldn't speak on anybody else's kids. Okay. Right? Um, if I am pressured to address that question, I'm going to be real careful because I do know um, it can be manipulated um, mm -hmm. and it could not look good. You know, me outwardly speaking, and it's, this is their kids, you know, um, so I would, again, approach it in a way where I'm not coming off judgmental because I am a Christian. And after, remember, I'm wearing that stamp. So I'm held accountable. And whenever I open my mouth, somebody's going to be watching and peeling apart every word I say. So I need to definitely quicken me, Holy Spirit. How am I going to deal with this? How am I going to say this? But I, what I would not do is um, fall victim to that, you know, scheme that I feel happens to Christian all the time in the media. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we can come off a certain way, but I I wouldn't I put, put my hands on that. <laughs> I'm not I new to this. I'm true to this. I'm not new to this. Hey, Good come point. on. Good yeah. point. What you say, Josh? So my spiritual father taught me that everything that happens in your house ain't for your community. Okay. And right. I would apply that lesson to this. And what I mean by that is I would say that, you know, the ways are my friends. And I believe that they have their child's best interest at heart. And if you really want to know what's happening in the Wade's household, I think you should ask Wayne and Gabrielle. Okay. And that would be that because, because I would not like putting them out there publicly, especially if it's anything disparaging. Those are still my friends. Sure. And I, 
want to come at their parenting style, their kid, whether I agree or just I could be like, man, heck no, nah, blah, 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 blah. But I'm not taking that to the media about someone else's child, how they're, you know, how they choose. And that's the other thing. We could be interceding. We could feel how we feel. But at the end of the day, it is a choice that those parents are making for that child. So yeah. I, would, I would immediately take it right back. But that would not discard or take away any personal or private conversations mm -hmm. that I would have with them. Right. Okay. okay, what you say, Taj? I'm the same. Uh, just as I will go to my friend in love, I, didn't, I then wouldn't want to take what I'm coming in love with and then turn it and use that against you. I mean, we just talked about that before about how we can share our story with somebody and then that person then turns around and say, well, girl, let me tell you about such and such. So I definitely would not address my friend's mm -hmm. private life in public or in the media wouldn't push me into that. What I would tell them is what I'm more worried about is me getting it right. So the only thing I can hold be held accountable for is what I do and how I leave my house. I, like I don't leave D Wade's house. Yeah. And if you want to know what's going on in D Wade's house, then you talk to D Wade. And as far as what I've talked to my friend about in private, that's it's between me and my friend because that's a private matter. Because right. I think also the public has, um, the culture has made it like you just got to know everything just because they are public right. figures and because they're right. famous. Like, no, these people still got private lives. And just like you tell yes, your yes. secrets to your friends, they are allowed to do the same. Yeah. So that's exactly how I would address it. I'm, I'm all about go to the horse. Don't ask me yes. nothing about nobody else's business. Go to the horse. Period. You want to call him right now? Because I can put him on speakerphone. Period. That's it. <laughs> and, and my dad, and what you're saying about your household, it makes me, uh, my dad always says, I'm worried about getting, and my, my brother and sister are Courtney and Aisha. He always says, I'm worried about getting Courtney, Aisha, and Alicia in the kingdom with the door locked. With the gate locked behind them, I, I can't be concerned. Yes, as a pastor, I'm concerned about, your, but I don't want to know your business. I don't want to know what's going on in your household. I'm not judging your children because I have grown children that are living their lives and Lord help us. So, you know, it's important for us as Christians to realize that we do have a responsibility. But like all of you said, and the media can sometimes push us to try to make us feel like we have to speak about something, but that can definitely be a breakdown of relationship. And, and one of the viewers, Kiana said, rebuke without relationship brings rebellion. And that is true. So you have to first be careful how you address certain things. Gerard said it's hard when the household is putting it together with the child because the child will not want to hear from anyone else. So it, it, if, if you did even maybe try to have that conversation with Zion, which you may or may not, <coughs> if his family, if his parents completely support this, then the child is going to look at you as a straight up enemy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So all And please that, don't let him find out that you're a Christian. Now he's grouping please, us all together. Please. My mom and dad, okay, but this Christian over here. Yes. So we want to always, we, 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 we want to never ruin our witness. We want to always be careful how we do things. And yes, some things with everything that we talked about tonight, some things, sometimes we do our very best to address certain issues and it still doesn't come out the way we intended, but we have to just trust that God will work out the extra. He'll work out the rest. And we did our part and we did it in love and we did it from a place of care, not because we wanted to know somebody's business or because we were just being messy, as we used to say back in the day. But it is a true care and an honest concern for a brother and sister in Christ. Listen, y'all, I could not have asked for a better episode tonight. It was so amazing. Everybody has such great input. I'm going to put y'all on front street. We had a private conversation, but I'm going to be calling y'all back. So if I want to say one more thing, back, though. Coming back. Go ahead. Go. I want to say one more thing. And that to that thing, I think a lot of times we forget that we might start the, start the thing, but we ne may never see the ending. So sometimes you are just there to plant a seed. Yes. And just because the person and doesn't turn around or do what you want them to do in that moment, doesn't mean you didn't plant the seed for somebody else to yeah. come along and water it, water. and then it grows. So That's always true. remember that when it comes to Christian issues, sometimes your only assignment is to plant the seed. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That was so good. Listen, y'all, thank y'all again. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. We are going to have some very exciting topics next, next week. Please tune in next week and give us all your good and juicy feedback. I would love to hear from you. And until next time, I will see you all later. Thanks again, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me.
Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely.